What's up Roblox, it's DV, and today I'm gonna be showing you how to play Roblox Islands. So this is actually an alt account, that's why I don't have my new cloak. <laughs> this is actually my old cloak, but this is a really old account that I actually had because I'm gonna start on a fresh island for you and show you how to play the game. The last time I did a tutorial, it was for the older version of Islands and the game has changed a ton since then. So this will be a five part series. You're gonna have this beginner guide here. Then the next video, you're gonna see an advanced beginner guide. And in that video, I'm gonna be showing you how to do auto farms and all kinds of stuff with like industrial kind of equipment so this is really just to get you started in the game i really don't want to overwhelm you with all these different things because there's a lot in this game you can go over here and you can see all the different skill levels and if you're brand new to this game it is actually very overwhelming especially if you're like what is forging so you go in here you can see all these items that you unlock eventually and there's just so much now in the game back when i did the other tutorials there was not that much in the game we're actually approaching like close to like a thousand if not already i think we're close to a thousand items in the game so this is going to be a pretty easy going tutorial for you. I will try to keep it to the basics. I'm going to give you a lot of different overviews. But before I begin, if you could do me a huge favor and hit that like button and smash the subscribe button if you're new and especially hit that like button if you're new to the game because I want to know if you're new. First thing we're going to do, by the way, is we're going to go and switch off shadows here. We really don't need them. I'm also going to turn these off even though I don't need them. But uh, shadows just kind of make the game a little harder to see what you're doing, especially if you're a first time player. So if you are new to this game, I want to give you a little bit of an overview first because I don't really want to just dive into mechanics like picking up stuff and starting to get to work no we're going to kind of give you an overview of the entire game and why you play it and what you do in the game so you know first impressions are usually wrong especially in islands the first impressions i had was not what the game is but you can see here we're on a floating island right so you can see this we're in the sky so this game was actually originally inspired by minecraft skyblock so it is very similar to the game except it's really taking a life of its own but lots and lots of similarities here so if i were to give you a quick summary of this game i would say it's a farming game Game. it's a building game it's a combat or adventuring game so there's quests and combat there's bosses you can battle there's mobs you can battle it's a collecting game as well so you can actually collect like rare items furniture trophies and all kinds of really cool things you can put on your island there's foraging so there's factory kind of builds you can do eventually for being able to you know like make different parts and stuff so if you want to get into that kind of stuff there's trading so if you like selling and buying and stuff that's a great game so it's a great trading game if you're looking for a good trading game there's animals you can see my cow over there so you can actually breed animals animals you can keep, take care of them you can make them happier and stuff but uh that's pretty much the game in a nutshell if those are the basics at least that you know things are going to be doing often so some of these things you don't even have to do so combat is definitely one you're gonna have to do with mobs currently there's no pvp in the game so you don't have to worry about like getting killed by players and trolls not quite yet but uh, most players in this game really trade and they adventure that's the, that's like the main two things mining is definitely up there but you don't have to later so once you start getting good coins so, so I, I have like 2600 coins right here once you actually get enough coins you could pretty much just buy whatever you need you don't really need to do work if you don't want to do work in this game you don't really have to and if you've been playing this game and we're hoping to like get a little tutorial how to get rich very quickly definitely check out my last video i just did which was you know pretty much the top ways to gain a ton of coins quickly in the game so how to get rich quick so let's go ahead and start with a couple things one is the ui so right here you can see on the top left you have your backpack you can either click on that or tap on it if you're on mobile this right here shows your your current coin balance over here shows the current season we're in that's why things kind of look orange and um, that looks like kind of a funny color different seasons are in the game now and you also have here these are just filters for whatever items you have so if i put these just like minecraft right so i can move things from my hot bar and back down to my hot bar so this is pretty much your inventory so you can filter by everything or you can just go to blocks or furniture kind of items foods combat or tools and then these are like ore and resources so i don't really use these a whole lot i do use search quite a bit so if you're looking for grass or you're looking for your axe or something that's pretty much what i do and then right here it shows the quantity of the item that you have and like I said, you can click on it and pretty much put it back inside your inventory. And then you can equip, you know, there's a little hotkey right here, one, two, three, four, five. So just equip that. And now we got this. So this is obviously a block and you can like build and stuff. And this game's tutorial actually has quite a bit, should, you know, give you like an idea of how to do stuff. So the tutorial will actually tell you to cut down some trees and build a, you know, a bridge out of grass. And we're going to do that in a minute. The other thing you got over here is obviously your berries. So you can pick your berries. You can actually eat food too. So if it's certain foods, you can actually eat to replace your health. So right here is your health bar. So you can see that red health bar right there and then um the other the great thing is if you're on pc you can hit the e button in or e key and it will actually open and close the other great thing is if you're in a window you can hit e as well and it'll close it so you can't obviously open skills with e but you can actually close it with e which is a nice so you know any window you're in you can pretty much hit e to close it and then right here's the skills so i've showed you this a few times but these are all the different skills and levels that you have so these are the things you can actually level up in the game and each one it shows like the current level so this account's pretty new like i said it was reset so this is level one all these are level one 
it shows a progress bar of how far I'm going on these. Each of these have different things that you can unlock so you can click in. And so farming, obviously the base stats here. So base stats will actually grow the higher you level. So if I'm level, like level 10, then this will actually, crops will actually yield more um, stuff to me. So if I harvest like wheat, it'll give me more wheat. And then obviously these are all the different unlocks. There's like different seeds and stuff. We're gonna get into this a little bit. So I don't wanna overwhelm you with that. Wood cutting is basically trees, anything revolving around trees. You can see you can get like different axes and you know tools as well as more tree unlocks. Mining is basically what it means. You know, you got pickaxes and you can actually mine and stuff for different rocks. Economy is basically for trading with other players. So the economy here is so that you don't just go straight up with a brand new account and start trading with players. Um, that kind of breaks the economy a bit. So economy is important. The way you get economy, I'll show you in a little bit, but basically you can build economy XP by selling stuff um, to the, the hub guys. So the people, the vendors inside the hub. And then animal care is actually for things like your cows and sheep and pretty much all these different items you can unlock. You can also unlock mounts eventually at level eight. These actually go very quickly. And then on the top right here, you can see what level you are. Like I said, you can also buy boost. This gives you like a one and a half times boost um, with Robux if you have it. There's also a daily bonus that you get with it up to a limit. So this actually increases the higher level you are, the more you know your limit increases. Foraging here is for things like smelting, you know, iron and gold and things like that. And these all have different functions. I'm not gonna go too deep into this. It's gonna be more of an advanced beginner thing. I'm not gonna confuse you with any of this stuff because it's a little bit more advanced. And then over here, you've got fishing. This is just a great way to make money. So we can ignore that for a moment. Cooking is another just great way to make money. It's not needed. You don't have to worry about cooking if you don't wanna get into cooking in this game. It's completely optional. Same with animal care, it's completely optional. Um, same with fishing, completely optional. You don't have to do those things. And then combat is kind of important. So combat basically gives you different unlocks So and portal access. So this is really your main progression through the different, your, you know, especially if you're focusing on adventuring, these are your basic ones that you're gonna be progressing through. So this is very important because this opens up different islands um, or portal access to different islands, the higher level you are for combat. And then these right here are just the different types of weapons. So you wanna level these up to cause more damage with them and you get some other unlocks so you can actually do like different recipes and stuff a little bit later. That's not as important as much as I would say combat. So like this right here is a light melee. I'll get into these um, in a little bit, but light melee is different obviously than heavy melee. This is like more like hammers. This is more like swords. This is archery. We're not really gonna cover archery at all during this tutorial series. It's not very good. It's not very important. Same with magic. We're not, you know, I'll show you a little bit of these are just different types of weapons. We're gonna pretty much focus on light melee this entire tutorial. And I might get into these during the advanced guides. So let's go ahead over here and pick up our plow. Pretty much you can pick up, you know, crops like that. Just hold down F. You can hold it down too. But you see, I just got a little bit of wheat in my inventory here. And then I also got some wheat seeds. Now, if they don't show up here and this is full, then just go inside the, you know, inventory and they'll show up in there. So no worries on that. Now we're gonna select our wheat seeds here and we're just gonna replant these. So, and if you're wondering what this thing is, this is a firefly, you can actually catch these. Um, they don't really do a whole lot. They're completely decorative type items. You know, you can actually catch them and stuff, but we're, we're not gonna mess with those. So we replanted our wheat, right? And we're just gonna keep doing this over and over. Now, if you're wondering what that tool is we just picked up, this is how you can actually plant more stuff. So you can only plant, you know, crops on dirt areas like this. So if you wanna expand your farm, you're pretty much gonna use the plow to change that grass over to dirt. So if you played Minecraft, it's very similar to that. Um, the difference is with this game, if you like jump over stuff, you're not gonna actually turn it back into grass. So it's not gonna be like that, <laughs> thankfully. And so pretty much we can expand our farm a little bit like this. Um, I will eventually show you how to use totems and stuff with your farm, it's pretty cool. And then we'll go over here and get our berries. Now berries in different seeds can actually give you extra seeds, by the way. So the more you harvest them, the better chance you'll actually get more seeds. So each time I harvest the wheat, eventually I'm gonna start getting more seeds from that. So that's a great way to save some money so you don't have to actually buy them. With trees, you can select your wooden ax here and you're pretty much just gonna chop the tree down. So we're just gonna chop that down. It's gonna give me the sapling and the wood. So you see, I got four pieces of wood. And then I also got this uh, little oak sapling here. We can replant that. And then we'll go ahead and do this one as well. Now, one thing to note, when you plant saplings next to each other, they only one will grow. So see like this, if they're too close to each other, only one can grow because they don't want to like, you know, make them collide. Although I think they should allow that. I think it would be better. But pretty much you see these two, only one's going to pop up once it's ready. It takes about like two minutes, I think around two minutes for trees to actually respawn. And what's going to happen here is if I cut down this one as soon as it's ready, this one will pop up right afterwards because it's still ready. It just can't 
fit. It can't, it doesn't have space to pop up yet. And then you can actually break grass um, with your wooden ax, or you can actually get a pickaxe, which we're gonna get right now. So we just chopped down some enough uh, trees to do this. So it just requires wood right here. So this is actually a workbench, you see this? And there's different levels of workbenches. You can see in here, this is a basic workbench. And once you have the basic workbench, you're gonna be able to get a tier two workbench, and then a, you know basically a tier three. And currently tier three is the best workbench you can get. So this is the most basic one. So we're gonna go ahead and craft our wooden pickaxe like that. And then we're gonna take our wooden pickaxe. We're gonna dig into some grass here to make our bridge because we need to be able to get out. See that portal right there? That will actually take us to the hub. And you can see there's a player, there's a character up there. I'm gonna explain these NPCs that visit you every now and then in a little bit. So we just need to do about like six or so of these. So I have six. I'm just gonna do a little bit more because we do need to get to the other side as well. So using your pickaxe, you can pretty much break these blocks. This right here is a stone block. So there's different types of blocks you can get in the game. All right, and you can still replace those. By the way, if you jump off, you don't die. You will actually just respawn to your um, spawn point. This is your spawn point right there. And let's go ahead and go over here and set up our bridge. So let's go just basically build these out. There we go. Now we got our ore right here. So we're gonna go and chop the ore down. Now your starter island may look a little different than mine. This was pretty much an older starter island. Yours will actually look a lot different than this. It'll probably look a lot bigger, but it's very similar. And the tutorial would be a little bit different too. So you won't actually have ore on your island. You'll actually have to go out to the hub for your ore during your tutorial. I probably should have reset this before I did this tutorial, but it's okay. Pretty much the same steps, right? As long as you know how to do stuff, it's pretty much the same steps. And your tutorial may not even tell you this, but as soon as you go through this um, this portal right here, and you, by the way, shift will actually give you sprint. So if you walk normally like that, or you can hold down shift and if you're on PC, you know, help you sprint. This is also a fruit tree. You can see I've got a fruit tree here so I can pick up my oranges. Oranges are kind of used for foods or you can actually sell them back to the, the vendings or NPCs or merchants, if you want to call them merchants out here. So let's go out here. And this is actually the hub. So this is what we call the hub with the castle. There's like a bunch of buildings and these there's little merchants out here that you can actually visit. So this is a mechanic over here on the right. The ones you really care about, especially as a brand new player, if you come out of this portal, you want to go straight to the clock tower. And these are the ones you really want to care about. What you're probably going to see on the screen as soon as you come out here, if you're in this current tutorial, is it'll ask you, it'll put a little arrow to go over here and you're going to have to farm a bunch of iron ore. So if you're on public servers, definitely go and create a free VIP server instead because coming out here and trying to farm um, iron is chaotic. It's like a it's like a Black Friday sell at you know your local like retail store. People are clamoring to get this iron because they're so competitive about it and how these rocks work is each time you you know like break one of these this is coal right here each time you break one of these it has a chance to respawn as either coal or uh rock here so this is a stone one or it'll actually respawn as iron ore and Typically speaking, people are really lazy about coming over here and farming the stuff they don't want. So iron is kind of scarce on public servers versus this, you can see there's tons of it out here. So you're pretty much gonna break this iron for your tutorial. All you gotta do is one of them and your tutorial should be ended after that. So we do need this iron to be able to make our workbench. So we're gonna go back in a minute, but let's go, I'm gonna show you the main two merchants you need to worry about as a brand new player. So you have the blocks merchant here, John, who is gonna let you buy like things like grass. So if you need to expand your island, you can pretty much buy more grass you can use these little up and down like plus negatives to add or remove and you can see the cost gets updated there um you can also sell wood i wouldn't recommend doing any of these cells through him you could get better prices with like players players will pay a lot more than that and then right here you can see you can buy like glass you could buy sand gravel all kinds of stuff and then there's like luxury furniture stuff you don't need to worry about yet but right here is grass so if you need to expand your island that's a great way to do it and then right here you can see we've got seeds and sell crops so this is pretty much the main two things you're going to be doing as a brand new player you're going to come over to this guy first you're going to go to tom and you're gonna go and click on the wheat you just harvested and you're gonna sell and that's only gonna give me 35 you know coins you can also sell your berries that you just harvested either you can save them for healing if you're like you know adventuring you might want to keep these for you know eating and healing yourself but if you're just like look i just want some coins right now you can go and sell those and then we just also harvested the orange which gives us 20 coins each so let's go ahead and sell those so you can see you know i made quite a bit of coins it's like you know a couple hundred i think i made about a couple hundred coins at the start and if you don't care about your animal by the way you can actually sell your animal too um i'm I'm going to show that in a minute but right here we got cletus who has seeds right so you can come in here go view shop and you see most of these seeds are actually locked because you do need a, a particular level to be able to buy them so you can see it says farming level fives you know wood cutting five farming nine so you can actually buy tree saplings so if you want to do more wood cutting you could do so here or you can also buy wheat seeds from this person so if you want to buy more seeds go ahead or if you want to save your coins 
go ahead and do that as well. You know, you, like I said, you can get free seeds by just harvesting over and over. And then over here's a couple other merchants just to give you a little bit of an idea of, you know, your whereabouts. This is a baker. You can sell stuff that you cook to him. Um, there's a fisher merchant up here. So you can, you know, if you end up fishing, which you can do pretty soon here, as soon as we make that next tier uh, workbench, we'll actually, you know, be able to make a fishing pole and you can actually fish over here for another way of making money. So this is a great way to make uh, money, especially as a beginner. So you can come up to this guy right here, Thomas, and then talk to him and you can see all the different things you can sell. That is another great way to make money. And I will show you how to fish in a little bit. So let's go back on. Oh, there's a totem guy right here, Arius. This guy will actually sell you totems. Uh, we don't have enough um, XP for those yet. And then this over here is Talia and Talia will actually sell you some like animal eggs and stuff. So if you want to like get sheep or chickens and stuff, you can talk to her. The adventure just pretty much lets you sell stuff to them. So if you go out here and adventure and like get drops from different mobs, that's another great way to get some money. And then mechanic, you can sell some stuff too as well. And then Slime Island is where you start your adventuring. So you need a weapon before you can really go out there. I mean, you can go out there without a weapon, but I would actually highly recommend against, you know, doing that. I would, I would say you need at least a wooden sword before you go out there. So coming back to my island through that portal, you can see we got some more wheat. So let's go ahead and harvest that. Um, we didn't get any seeds, but um, we got our seeds back and then we can harvest our berries again. So we're just pretty much going to, you know, recycle this process over and over and over. I wouldn't chop down your fruit tree because you can actually make money off of your fruit. It's totally up to you. All right, so we're gonna go back over to our workbench and we're gonna create this new basic workbench. It did require a couple ore and five wood. So let's go ahead and make that. So let's go ahead and take that out and place it. By the way, when you're placing things, let me just go ahead and cut this down and explain it to you. So you can cut it back down and it'll go into your inventory. It won't destroy it. So see how it just went back in my inventory. Anything you cut down will pretty much go back in your inventory for the most part. But you see this ghost item, this is where it's gonna be placed. And you can also hit R if you're on a keyboard, you can hit R to rotate it. So that way you can, you know, if you want it like over here, it kind of auto rotates depending on where your camera is facing as well so when you're facing stuff so if you wanted to like reverse it you can hit r key maybe you don't want to you know move it so you can just do that and so let's go ahead and hit f to open up the basic workbench and you can see our world just changed look at all the different items we can now make so right here like i was saying you can actually make a tier two so this is a tier two workbench this is to use to advance you know make you basically make advanced items it's kind of like semi-advanced it's not quite advanced where you really get the advanced stuff though is the tier three which you can only make from a tier two so if you want to be able to make the best workbench to be able to make everything in the game pretty much you're going to need these there's also some other workbenches in here on the left here is a filter of the different type of items you can actually sort through so you can see you got all here you also have tools right so this is all the different tools so if you're looking for like sickles um, i'll explain what all these do in a little bit blocks and then workbenches here so these are all the different workbenches so animal workbenches let you like craft animal stuff furniture lets you craft furniture cooking lets you make you know food florals a game pass is a game pass but these give you basically like little plant like pots and stuff this gives you like special lights and then over here in utility this is going to be things like campfire, small chest, sawmill, so that you can cut wood into actual like wood planks and stuff. And then factory, we don't have anything in here that's been unlocked because you need at least a tier two and a tier three for that. And then right here, these are all just like kind of fun game pass things. So firework, obby kits, and jukeboxes. So those are not really important. Coming back to tools though, I'm going to show you all the different tools you need to know about. So right here, you obviously have a fishing rod that you can use for fishing. I told you about that. We're going to actually make that. You can also make another plow. You don't really need one, but in case you like lost it for any reason, you can make another one stone shovel is actually only used for snow that's not really something we're going to cover today you don't really need it stone sickle you don't really need this either but it does actually speed up your you know like if you have a giant giant farm this is actually pretty good to get the wooden sword we're grinding for now so we need another 19 wood to be able to make this so we can go adventure and then we these we don't need to worry about right now we need some more wood so let's go ahead and cut down some wood because we need 20 wood so we can go adventure the other thing while we're waiting for our trees i want to explain these guys right here so you see cletus and talia talia is not going to really come back so you can get like this anniversary cake so i just got like a happy it was it's basically islands is like one year anniversary so they were giving away these little items as a gift so you're not really going to see her unless they make you know do some other special event but pretty much you will be seeing cletus and sometimes focal they give you different items depending on the season so right here it says i'm selling special fall crops want to take a look you can go to view their shop and you can either sell pumpkins or buy them because it's fall right now um he's selling pumpkin seeds and also you know letting you sell pumpkin back to him so what you can do is you can set up a little pumpkin farm over there you can actually talk to cletus every now and then um, you can also ask him to leave if you don't want him on your island during the summer you might actually get a chance to have cletus on your island it's a rare 
chance that he'll actually visit you and he'll actually sell you and let you buy watermelon. So he'll actually sell you um, watermelon seeds and let you sell watermelons back to him. And this is only on the summer. Now the seasonal cycles is every 24 hours in the real world will actually create a new season. So tomorrow will actually be um, winter for me. And in winter, he doesn't actually visit you in winter, but Focal might visit you and let you buy some flowers. So again, it's a great way to actually make a little bit of extra coins. And uh, it's just kind of something to do. So like, you know, if someone actually visits your island every now and then, it's kind of neat. The other thing I want to show you real quick while we're waiting, I want to show you the pets. So the cow here, you can actually pet them. You can also sell them like I was saying earlier. So if you want some, you know, coins really fast, you can get that. I'm not going to go into too much detail here on happiness and traits and breeding and all that kind of stuff, but you can pet it for XP and stuff. It's kind of fun. It's just really a pet. And you know, a lot of people call them animals. I call them pet. Let's go cut this down so we can make our sword. And we're going to come over here. We just unlocked a better ax too. So we definitely want to get that as soon as we can. It does require stone. So I'm actually going to create that in a little bit. So while we're waiting for some more of that, let's go ahead and start getting some stone. Because if you go in here and see what that requires, a stone ax, it does require 10 wood. We have enough wood, but we need 17 more stone. Well, lucky for us, we could either go out to the hub and, and farm some stone rocks, or we can just use the stone that's on our island because we don't really need this, right? So I'm just going to cut these down. We're going to get about 19 of these. Also, you see this little chat right here. Every like 30 minutes, you get 100 coins. All right, let's see if we have enough. We are, yeah, we have enough stone. So we can go, we got exactly 20 and we got 10 wood. So let's go ahead and make that. Now it's going to be much easier. We can get rid of that wooden ax. It's going to be much easier for us to cut down trees. So you can see how much faster that is. So much better. And we also don't need this workbench anymore. So you can pretty much get rid of it. The nice thing, like I said, about axes is they work the same as a pickaxe. You can pretty much cut trees down with a pickaxe or with an ax. There is more damage for an axe against a tree than a pickaxe depending on the quality of your pickaxe so just we just got enough wood for our sword so we're gonna go in here make that real quick and now i've got it so you can pretty much just left click on it that's all you need to do um the cool thing about this just as a mechanic wise the sword will actually do any damage in front of it so if i have my mouse over here and i'm clicking as long as something's in front of the sword it will actually cause damage the other great thing about it is wherever my mouse is pointing it'll cause damage so i can click right here and in, and you see the add the and you can see the sword is actually swinging in front of me but if i touch something here with my mouse within range it'll actually do damage in front and in back i'll show that in a little bit it's actually a little little small tip there for you but before we jump over there let's go through these menu things again real quick we've already covered skills we've already covered um, backpack right here under explore you're going to notice you have local invites here. So this is actually your island. So you can click that anytime and it'll actually just keep, you know, bringing you back to your, your same island. And then right here are published islands. We're not going to cover that yet in this video. Um, you do need economy level 30 to be able to buy anything on these islands. So you can't actually buy anything on these islands. Some of these actually might have obbies and stuff, so you can still visit them. There's no reason not to actually visit them and kind of explore and see um, really cool looking islands. There's a lot of great islands here that are published. And you can see this is actually like, I think this is like the top 50. This is actually a public listing. You can't do it without spending money on a pro pass. See, it's like 1800 Robux to be able to be one of these publishers. So these are all pro pass carriers. Basically, this is a join code. So if your friend gives you a code, you can actually connect to them as long as they're online. You can actually visit them and join them, but it doesn't work on a VIP server. So I'm currently on a VIP server, so you don't see my code. Code. But otherwise, if I was on a public server, then I could actually give my friends my own join code and they can actually visit me and join me in the game. Now, one thing to note about that, you got to be really careful whenever someone's on your island. So say there's someone on your island that you do not know. One thing to note, if they ask you for build permissions, it'll show up right here. Do not give them build permissions or they can actually take anything off of your island and keep it and steal it from you. So especially that cake right there. So, you know, if you have something that's really rare or valuable on your island, especially something like this, this might be worthless to you, but because it's a limited island, item they might actually you know go and just be like dink yoink so they'll do that and then they'll leave your island and take it from you and you can't get it back and so unfortunately there's no punishment for scammers so if someone steals your stuff you're kind of out of luck so let's go ahead and go out here and show you how to adventure so we're going to equip our sword out here we're going to go back through slime island and this is one of many islands by the way so this is the first one you can see right here there's a desert over there so there's scorpions over there those are actually um the second best mob to kill right now there's right there is wizard island so there's wizard lizards there so you can kill and then there's the buffalo core island up there those are like kind of like these giant like stone golem things stone like 
buffalo. And then there's actually a, another island kind of off in the distance back there, which is the diamond mines. So how these are all interconnected is you go through that portal to Slime Island first. Then you can go, as soon as you have enough combat level, you can go through that portal right there to Buffalcore Island. And then Buffalcore Island has two portals. They have a portal to the Wizard Island as well as the Diamond Mines. And Diamond Mines is like one of the highest level areas right now. And then Buffalcore will take you to Wizard Island and Wizard Island will take you to Desert Island. So it's all chained together. So it's pretty easy to follow. So you're not gonna really get lost. There's no way for you to like go through this one and that one and then go to another one. You can't really get lost in this game as long as you follow the portals correctly. Down here though, you can see those little green and pink cubes. These are actually mobs. So these are called slimes. So the pink one's gonna give you the best. That's basically the hardest one here. Um, and it's gonna give you the best item drops. What it drops can actually help you with some industrial items, same with these. So you pretty much any gear stuff you will pretty much wanna keep. So the way you do it, like I said, so you see I'm like facing backwards. If I click on it with my mouse button, it works. And if I, you know, even just kind of click anywhere else, as long as I'm facing them, it works. So again, I could actually be fighting two different mobs so you can see I'm, I'm fighting this one and the one behind me and so that's a really cool little tip now try to stay back a little bit see how I'm kind of kiting these I can actually you know pretty much stay ahead of them like this as long as they're flashing red I'm causing damage to them you can also see the number the amount of damage I'm doing to them so you don't actually ever have to get damage from these guys and if you're on a public server the loot is actually shared so as long as you do a little bit of damage to each of these on a public server and someone else kills it then you'll still get some loot now you won't get any XP if they get the final hit only the last person to hit the mob will actually get the XP. So if you're trying to grind XP, then you should probably just solo. You see, I just leveled up my light melee right here. So what's, what's going to happen is my, my weapon will do a little bit more damage now. So the higher the level, the more damage you're going to do. You can see now my health is starting to go down, right? You see it's down right here. It's about not quite 50%, but it's pretty low. And so since I have berries, I can go and equip that and I can just hold this down and I'll continue to eat them. You'll see my health go back up. So I'm now I'm fully healed. And if I come over here, there's actually a boss and most islands have bosses now except for desert and buffalo core do not yet so as of this tutorial i'm sure they're going to get them eventually and so you can see here i've just uh, summoned a boss here and you can see it actually will be back in like 15 minutes so this boss this is the slime king this boss right here will drop some good xp as well as some items but this is a great one for grinding especially if you're trying to get good items um, you just got to be careful with them because he will do a lot of damage to you but this is a slime king boss on slime island so you can actually grind the boss now if you die while he's killing you or attacking you then he will disappear he will despawn and you'll have to wait until the next time and then we can come back over here and there's actually a pond over here um one thing you'll note by the way this is a buffalo core it sees see it says requires combat level 16. i'm nowhere near that right now i'm only level two right now so we're not really going to grind for an hour and a half to do that it does take a while to grind that but you know take advantage of your daily xp like i said but you see right here there should be a fish in here somewhere there it is it's like a little dark spot right there so pretty much what you're going to do is you're going to get your fishing pole out but you just get your fishing pole and you cast it so you're pretty much going to hold down see the little bar right there so if the bar is full it's going to obviously launch it further if its bar is kind of low then it's going to it's going to pretty much cast it shorter so if you do a little bit then it's going to be pretty close to you if you do a hold down and go longer then it's going to go further so you just kind of need to practice this and then what you do is you just need to get it really close to the fish and as soon as it actually bites it wiggles so you see watch the little bubble so see it's going to actually come back to my bobber and you're going to see it wiggle and then you see little bubbles. And when that happens, you want to click again. And then you're going to get a fish. Sometimes you get like little rare drops like pearls or propellers. Um, that's a little bit that's a little bit higher level fishing. And the nice thing about fishing is the higher the level, the better your fish are going to get. So you see this right here under base stats for fishing. The more you level fishing, the more luck you get for better items. <clears throat> and then eventually you're going to actually unlock at level 20, you're going to unlock this iron fishing rod. And that's important because in order to be able to get better stuff like these, you need to have that iron fishing rod. So definitely definitely craft that as soon as you actually level up, but that's how you fish. Eventually you can get totems to spawn these on your own island. So you can see right here, this is a stone totem you can buy eventually for 2000 coins. This will actually spawn stone on your island, coal totem, um, wheat totem. So this will actually harvest your wheat automatically and automatically replant the seeds for you. So all you have to do is collect um, wheat from that totem. So this is pretty much the loop that you're gonna be going through probably for the first day of playing this game. You're probably gonna be doing this for a bit. Day two, day three, you could probably start advancing a little bit more. Now, if you wanna be able to smelt iron, so we didn't, we haven't really shown you anything with iron. What you're gonna do is you're gonna come over here to your workbench, see this campfire. We need a little bit more wood to make it. So let's go ahead and cut down some trees. So you're gonna to need to know how to do this so you can actually start smelting gold. So you can smelt iron. You can also bake stuff in, with the campfire. So let's see, do we have enough? Um, yeah, I think we have enough for this campfire. So let's go ahead and craft that. So let's go ahead and place that here. 
And how this works is you're gonna fuel it with some coal. So you can either fuel it with wood or coal. And then we're gonna put iron in here. So this is just raw iron, right? This is iron ore and it's found in the hub. Um, you can also get an iron totem eventually if you don't wanna have to go to the hub. And we're just gonna use, we'll just use wood at first and they see how it's burning right now. So this shows how much fuel you have left, right? So once that runs out, then you're gonna be in some trouble. So you can see this is the progress bar on the outside. This is how long it's gonna take before you can actually get your smelted iron. But if you go and click in, that's how much fuel you have, right? so it's gonna get stuck pretty soon here so as soon as the flames go out and that progress bar goes away it means you can't it's not it's it's kind of paused so you can actually put some more coal in here instead and you can see it's almost done and then it's gonna wrap up so it does resume where you were so you're not losing all your progress you can also take these out if you don't you know want to use that coal so that is iron right there you see you see I've got some iron stacked up and that's how we start making other things that require iron so for example right here you need 50 of those to be able to make your tier 2 you need 50 stone and you need 50 wood so it's a little bit of a grind to make a tier 2 but that's gonna be your next step um, for progression and then you're also going to eventually want to be able to make some better stuff here so like pickaxes like you want the stone pickaxe and stuff and you can actually level that up by just going out inside the hub and you know pretty much breaking ore and stuff forging xp you can pretty much do this so we can go and make some more you know iron and that will actually give us forging xp right here so you can see i've got a little bit of forging already and then eventually once you get to level two which we should be able to get to in a minute um you're going to unlock the small furnace which lets you put in three items at once so you don't have to do one at a time like this you can actually do three which is really helpful it definitely speeds things up and you can make as many of these as you want you don't you're not limited to one campfire or one furnace and stuff so anyway that's going to be it for this video hope this was actually helpful to you in the next video i will be showing you how to do auto farm so like basically using totems we're going to actually make the tier two and then some anvils and we're going to start getting into the steel side of things as well as iron side to be able to start making things like you know industrial equipment and such so i will give you a better walkthrough of these things in the next video on how to use them so we're not going to be covering any basics we're going to be going straight into how to use these industrial items and conveyors as well as like how to auto you know how to set up an auto sawmill how to set up an auto coal farm lots of great videos coming up this week so stay tuned for tomorrow for the next step thanks again for watching be sure to like and subscribe and i will see you in the next tutorial vid peace